So this is the 100 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 5.6 G Master, and today we're going to talk about it. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. So I was on a safari a few weeks ago filming with the 100 to 400, the FX6, the A7S3, and the 28 to 135 power zoom. And this lens I talked about in another video. And I've got to say, using this lens, again with the 1.5 punch and the clear image zoom, touch tracking autofocus, it was a breeze to work with. And I filmed especially a lot on the ground, uh, filming some of the local tribes in Tanzania. And overall, it was a really great system uh, to work with the power zoom and the FX6. And I'm a little bit keen on seeing details for the 16 to 35 F4 power zoom that Sony is releasing. So the 100 to 400 weighs about 3.1 pounds. And the FX6 body alone weighs about 2.1, 2.2 pounds. So it is a front heavy system, which can be problematic for certain uses. For me, what I was able to do is put this on a sandbag, which is what they do on Safari, is when you're putting your cameras on sandbags, it mitigates a lot of the shaking or motion that happens when you're moving around. So along with sandbags and using the internal stabilization on the lens itself, I was able to get footage that performed admirably well, uh, all things considered, as the FX6, of course, does not feature stabilization on the camera internally. So I was relying mainly on the stabilization of the lens itself. And I would say between this and the 28 to 135, it performed better on stabilization, even though it is a much longer focal length. And on here you have a tripod collar, you have your you know traditional, your autofocus switch, your focus range limiter, steady shot, you have a custom mode button here, you have a button here, button here, you actually have Quite a few custom buttons on the lens itself. Now the 100 to 400 does extend while zooming. The 200 to 600 does not and does so internally. So how well does the FX6 synergize with the 100 to 400? Very well I'd say. Especially considering after firmware 2.0 you have all these new features on the camera that make working with the camera much easier. And the 100 to 400 has a lot of features on it as well that really help with getting footage, such as internal stabilization, uh, focus range limiter, and really just the lens and the camera themselves, it, it just feels like it's a package that works well together. With the 100 to 400, I can also achieve 600 millimeters by using the 1.5 punch in on clear image zoom. The only thing I can't do is use clear image zoom in conjunction with S and Q mode. So in that instance, I would say if you need a much longer reach and you want uh, SNQ mode to be active, you need to get a longer range lens. With the 100 to 400, nearly all my bases were covered though, as I use the 100 to 400 for long distance subjects and the 20 to 135, of course, for more close range subjects and more on the ground. So overall, I would say the 100 to 400 does a really great job on the FX6. The image resolution is, is very clear and crisp. I would say the image quality subjectively is better than the 28 to 135 and the 200 to 600, not just because the 100 to 400 is a G Master, but there appears to be a much better, uh, sharper and crispiness to the footage and photos from the 100 to 400. So hopefully you found this video helpful or insightful, and if you did, give a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.